In our last video, we learned how to log that something had happened. That way, the next day when somebody's like, nah, we didn't do that, we know. It's like, yes, you did. But sometimes you want to log multiple instances of it. So we're going to build on our last program and show how we can log multiple instances of something happened. Hi, this is Tim, and I help you become a better technician so that you're always in demand. Here's where we left off in our last program. When the green button is pressed, we're going to use a one shot and capture the time and move it to this button press log. When we created this, we created a two dimensional array with dimensions of seven, which covers our time, and 10, which covers the number of instances we're gonna store. So all we've gotta do is add some code to this to shift it around. First, let me show you how not to do it because a lot of you do this and then you contact me and don't understand why it doesn't work. So this is an important exercise. We're gonna bring down a copy instruction. And what you think you wanna do is you want to copy our source, which is button press zero comma zero, and you wanna to copy to a destination of the next element, which in this case is gonna be button press log one comma zero. And then the length is going to be 10. So let's put that in there so we can see exactly what's going to happen. Now let's go to our controller tags and we're going to press the green button. And bam, right away it looks as if we have what we're looking for because we have 2022, 3, 1, 19, 14, 42, all that. But then we start kind of repeating ourselves. it looks like, and we end here at 2022-3-1. If you notice, that's the 10th element. So what's happened is we told it 10 elements. It is copying 10 elements down, and so that's not going to be enough. So what we need is the actual number of elements here. So we have 7 one way, and we have 10 the other way for a total of 70 elements. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna change our length to 70. Now, just in case you're keeping score, we are still on the wrong way to do this, guys, but I wanna make sure we understand exactly what is gonna happen here. So now I'm gonna go back over to my controller tags and I'm gonna press the green button. And bam, right away, we have the exact same value in all of these. And what's happening is we put the time of that button press into array zero. And then we told it to copy it. Well, the copy instruction, the way it works, it's just going to copy zero to one, which means that current time is now in one. And then we're going to copy one to two, which means that exact same time. Then we're going to copy two to three, three to four. So we end up with the exact same data in all of these elements. So there's a few ways to do this, and we're going to use the basic way. We're going to make a second array. Go to your Edit Tags tab, we'll close this button, press log up, and we're going to make a second array exactly the same size called button press log copy. And it's also gonna be a double integer with 10 and seven. Now I can type it here or I can click this dialog box and put a seven here and a 10 right here. And now let's go back to our main program. And instead of copying to button press log, we are gonna copy to that button press log copy. And then we're actually going to copy our copy instruction. That's a lot of copies, so let's just drag down another copy instruction. And then we wanna take the button press log copy and move it to our button press log, except we want to do position one. And again, that length is going to be 70. And I know that was a lot of copies and a lot of moves and not a lot of explanation, but this is one of those that really you need to see it happen. And then you can start to understand how it happens. So let's go back to our controller tags and let's focus on elements three, four, and five, which are the hour, minute, and second. So this was 19, 15, 55. I'm gonna hit the button. Now our time in element zero is 19, 19, 52, but also our time in number one 
1952. But our time in our next one is 1915-55. So let's hit it again just so we can make sure we understand that this is still not working. As now the time is 1921-9. And the second time is 1921-9. But then we seem to go in the right order after that. And this has to do with the order of operation, really. So let's focus on this program here. As first, right now, we're reading the time, and then we're moving it and doing our shift here. What we need to do is we need to shift and then move our time. So we're going to edit this line, and we're going to bring that GSV to the end here. And this is a really good one to study on later to understand how program flow works. Now let's go back to our controller tags, and we're going to look at elements 3, 4, and 5 again. So this time, I'm going to press the button, and we're at 19.22.17. Now notice that's not the same time as this one. So let's press it again so you see that 19.22 and 17 are going to come here now. And now I'm going to press it again, and you're going to see it comes into element number two here. So now we're getting a shift like we want. But that's only one way to do data logging. Click here for a playlist of other ways to use data logging to troubleshoot your machines.